I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is everybody how, glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Thank the call out. Amen. So we're going to hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is about to go forth. You know, let's go ahead and stand for the reading of God's word. Turn to, if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 12. Yeah, you go. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just let me know when you're ready, brother. All right, go ahead and turn to John chapter 12, verse 24, and the reading of God's Word. Amen. Every soldier needs a sword. Amen. Oh. Hey, uh, brother, will you grab him a Bible real quick sure. in the back? Um, yes. That, that, um, there you go, right there. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. There you go, Brother Duncan. Take care of you, brother. If you need to hold on to that, you're welcome to hold on to that. Amen. Keep that for your own. Amen. Yes. The flower fades, the grass withers, but the word of the Lord will endure forever. Amen. Amen. So that's why we bank everything on the word of God. We're, we're putting everything on the fact that the Word of God is true. If it's not true, we're in big trouble. Amen? Amen? But we have faith. We know that everything is perfect in the Word of God. Amen. We can take it to the bank. So, John chapter 12, verse 24, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word, God. I thank you that you've given me this, Lord, to share, but I pray that I would share it as you've given it to me. Yes. God, I can do nothing without you, Lord. I must decrease and you must increase. Give me unction from your Holy Ghost to speak your word boldly as I ought to. God, I pray that you'd give a word to your people today. Lord, because that's why we've come. We've come to worship you and to hear from your word. Lord, so I pray that you that, that you would come down and be in our midst, Lord, and speak to us, Lord. Touch, touch it. Highlight certain things that you want us to see. Save, set free, and deliver. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We're going to keep, um, keep reading in that scripture, though. In verse 25, he says, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto, e unto life eternal. And if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where, I, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Amen. Amen. So he starts out in this in verse 24 by saying, unless they, a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it, it abideth alone. When a seed, any seed, falls into the ground, it cannot resurrect. It cannot grow into a plant unless it first dies. So we know that this is the picture of, of Christ when he died and he went into the into the ground for three days and then he resurrected right mm -hmm. but this is also teaching us about our spiritual life so when a man or woman sees the truth about about his life they should start to hate this life because this life is a lie and they should start to seek for a permanent dwelling place where they can live forever. Yes. But before you can get to that life, there is a problem. You are still alive, right? That's the problem. So you have to die to this life. You have to die to your sin. I seen a guy saying that he was a Christian on the streets yesterday, but he was still smoking. He was still bound in sin and things that God hates. I knew that he was not a Christian. How did I know? Because he was still alive. Mm -hmm. 
He had not been crucified yet. Right. The Bible says this in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, Paul's saying that it's not me that's living anymore. I've died. I've been crucified with Christ. Amen. And you have to live in the crucified. Amen? Amen. So when I see somebody smoking a cigarette, I see that they're still alive. Right. They've never died. They've never been crucified to this life. Right. So as Christians, we're supposed to judge fruit. If you see somebody who's still alive, you know that they haven't passed from death to life yet. Amen? Amen? Right. And once you pass to life, you better never go back. You better die daily. Yeah. Die daily. So we're going to examine this further. How do you know if you are still alive and have not died yet? Well, first of all, I want you to think about examining yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves or test your own selves is what that means. The Bible says to test yourself. So as we go through these scriptures, I want each one of us to test ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Because we need to know if we're on our way to heaven or hell. Amen? Amen? We need to know. We need to examine ourselves to all the scriptures in the Bible. But right now, examine yourselves to these scriptures. Matthew 12, 33 says this. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. So Jesus is, is telling us, if you want good fruit, make the tree good and its fruit will be good. If, if you have an almond tree, that almond tree will produce, produce almonds every single time. You will never come up to an almond tree and see an apple on it. Right. That would be funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. And, and Jesus is using this same example to show us if you're a holy tree you can only bear holy fruit Amen. if you have died with Christ if you have died in the Lord spiritually not physically not our bodies now but I'm talking about spiritually if you have died in Christ then you know that the only uh, fruit you can produce in your life is holy fruit because you are a new tree the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Why is that? Because that old man died. The old sinful man, the man that liked pornography and perversion. He has to die in order for the new man to live daily. In order for that new man to resurrect inside of you. The Bible teaches that our, our inner man is renewed from day to day. So this inner man, and that's our spirit. The Bible calls it our inner man, and God resurrects him. He makes him alive, in other words, by his resurrection power. He makes our spirit alive so that now we want the things of God. We no longer want the things of the flesh. The things of the flesh gratify the flesh. They are pleasurable temporarily and then bring forth death. Yes. So the wages of sin is death. Amen. So, the, so you have to stop doing the things that make you feel good temporarily and, do, and start to, to do the things that make you feel good eternally. Amen. Amen. Yes. And in the, beginning, it, in the beginning, when you taste medicine, it might not always taste good. But you acquire a taste for it. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was first a new Christian, I was reading the Word of God. I didn't like everything that it said. <laughs> because it said that I was wicked. <laughs> it was, the Bible was condemning me when I would read it. Right. But I knew that it was true. Yep. So I had to humble myself constantly mm -hmm. and say, Yes, Lord, please change me so that I can be 
Because I'm not what I'm reading. So I need you to change me and make me into this new person. Because I see it. I see it. Do you see that when somebody really gets saved, they're different, aren't they? Amen. Amen. When you see somebody really get a hold of Jesus, you see that they are a new creature in Christ. Right. I remember uh, when I got saved about five years ago, uh, when I was religious my whole life, but I got saved, I got radical. I mean, that's what it means to be saved. It means your whole life is about Jesus. Right means you're no longer living for yourself, but you're living for the one who died for you, Amen. for Jesus. Amen. So when I really got saved and came out of religion, amen, amen. and quit being a religious uh, um, hypocrite, yeah. I came out and I remember I was taking a, a woman out to eat every month, an old elderly woman uh, that lived next door. And she had known me for years as, as a religious guy. But when I received Christ and I died and the new man was resurrected in me, mm -hmm. she noticed. She said, there's something different about you. Mm -hmm. My countenance was changed. Mm -hmm. She could tell that there was a new spirit. There was a new, a new owner mm -hmm. of this body. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that led her to ask me, if she could receive the same thing. Wow. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And this is after years of knowing her. Amen. And Jesus. I didn't have to say a word. She knew right off the bat that there was something that had changed in me. Amen. And this is what happens when you receive the Holy Ghost. Yep. People notice, I, I was a very dark, I, I had a, a lot of uh, spiritual darkness in me. The Bible teaches that when we get saved, that He takes us from darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. He brings us into the kingdom of light. Amen? Amen? From Amen. dark, from the kingdom of darkness. That's why you feel depressed. That's why you feel lonely and, and, uh, and, and isolated. Right? You can never connect with anybody. Right? Amen. Even when you're in a room full of people, you're like, you still feel like you're alone. Amen. Why is that? Because, you, because there's no fellowship outside of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. God made you to connect with other people that are alive. That's right. Amen. He made you to be alive spiritually and so that you would connect with other people that are alive spiritually. Preach it. Amen. And there's no fellowship outside of that. It's just, it's just a figment of your imagination if you think that you have real relationships outside of Jesus. Yep. What I mean by that is you can know people, but if, they're, if they don't have this this life inside of them, they're not going to be able to connect with you like somebody that does have that life inside of them. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. So anyways, back to the verse of Matthew 12, 33 about the tree being good and his fruit being good. Remember, it said, make the tree good and his fruit will be good. Remember that. If you're a good tree, you'll produce good fruit. Yes. Amen. That should put the fear of God in us. Amen? Yes. If we're producing bad fruit, we need to go back to the beginning. Amen. And we need to die again. What this verse is saying is that a good tree can only produce good fruit. So you must start all over and die to your life. You have to die. You have to end this life and begin your eternal life. Even now, I am, I am already living my eternal life yes already right. i will never die so when my body dies i'm not going to die right when my body dies i'm just going to pass on to life once more i'm just going to pass on i'm not going to die Amen. so that's the promise of every christian because we're already made alive in the spirit amen, amen. so this life has to end before you can become a citizen of heaven. If you are a citizen of heaven, you will live like a citizen of heaven. Amen. You get a new identity when you're a citizen of heaven. You get a new purpose when you're a citizen of heaven. The sinner who you used to be has died because you have put him to death with his evil deeds. So you get up on the cross and you put him to death. You watch yourself die 
Amen? Amen. Galatians 5.24 says this, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. I'm not, uh, the King James says the passions and desires. Amen? Amen. They that are Christ. So those, those who are truly Christ, those who are truly saved, those who are truly born again and on their way to heaven, they have crucified the flesh yes. with its passions and desires or affections and lusts. Mm -hmm. Amen. Crucifixion is a brutal death. Yes. Amen? Yes. Crucifixion, to be crucified, the reason why they're using that terminology is because it, it is a brutal death. It's not easy to die. Amen? Amen. It's not easy to suffocate yourself to death. Yes. Hallelujah. Spiritually. Right. Amen? Amen? But that's what you do. Think about it. When you are giving up your drugs and you're giving up, say, say you're addicted to nicotine, say you're addicted to pornography, say you're addicted to, to things that God does not approve of, right? Sin. Amen. You have to submerge yourself. That's what baptism means. Mm. Yes. Submerge yourself in repentance until you die. You have to come under the water of repentance and suffocate yourself in repentance until you die and somebody else comes alive. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is what American Christianity is missing. Amen. They've not died. Amen. They're still alive. I'm seeing people that have not died. So I'm seeing a lot of living people in the flesh. Right. Amen. We're living in the spirit. Amen. They're living in the flesh. Yeah. They're religious. But they ain't saved. Right. Amen? Amen. They're religious, but they're not saved because they never died. Amen. They've never been born again. That's what it means to be born again, that you have died, and now you've been born again in the Spirit. No death, no resurrection. Amen. Amen. Yes. Crucifixion is a brutal death. You must put yourself upon the cross and suffer through the loss of everything this life had to offer. I'm going to say that again. Amen? Yeah, the Lord's happy when I say this. <laughs> you must put yourself upon the cross and suffer through the loss of everything this life had to offer. All your worldly hopes and dreams. Your beloved addictions. Amen? Your beloved, I said beloved in there on purpose. I loved my nicotine chew mm -hmm. in the flesh. Amen? My flesh loved having nicotine in my body. Yep. I, I loved it in the flesh. Amen? Yeah. Amen? So all your worldly hopes and dreams, your beloved addictions, and your worldly lusts and desires, worldly friendships, they have to die on the cross. Amen. Why? Because they will they will drag you down and, and you'll end up resurrecting again in the flesh. Amen. You have to stay dead. Once you've been crucified, you have to stay dead. See? Some people get crucified and they really become born again. They really get filled with the Holy Spirit and they're really walking in the light. But then they, they quit sowing to the Spirit. You see? Yeah. And then they resurrect Physically, they resurrect in the flesh. And that old man that they crucified comes back to life. Mm. And they're disqualified mm. from the promises of God, including eternal life. So they lose their salvation, you could say that. Yeah. Really, we haven't ever gained our salvation yet. We don't gain our salvation to the very end. Right. We're saved, but we're not through the pearly gates yet. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when our salvation is complete, we'll be on the last day when we hear the trumpet and we're resurrected and we get our new bodies. Yeah. That's when you can uh, know that you're, you're sealed, sealed. Amen? Yeah. Amen? We're sealed in the Holy Ghost, but that don't mean we can go live like a devil. Amen. Yep. That's false grace. Amen. Yes. So... 
All your worldly hopes and dreams have to die. You had these dreams of having this big house and having this nice car and, and you thought that having a family would make you happy. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Only Christ can fulfill you. That's right. Yep. Only God can take that, that horrible feeling inside of you, that burden of sin is what it is. Yeah. It's a weight and, it, and it's, it, it feels you're spiritually sick in your sin. And you feel it. And God is saying, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden. All you with a, a sick feeling inside of you. Depression. Come to me. I will give you peace. I will give you rest. That's what God... God came... Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Yeah, that's right. But now we have to die to what we thought was good and now live to what He says is good. Yeah, that's right. We thought that there was life inside of drugs and alcohol and pornography and, and uh, every in our in our worldly dreams we thought that getting a college education would make us happy that's right Amen. i've been there i've been there that's me Amen. i thought that having a college education would make me happy right. because that's the american dream that's what they're teaching in these schools that's right there's false prophets in every classroom Amen. Amen. and they're teaching a philosophy of life that if you have money if you have the job, if you have this, the family, then you're going to be happy. That's what you're missing. And then if, if that doesn't work for you, then you need the party. You need the girls, and you need the fast cars, and you need to be the, the life of the party. Then you'll be happy. And the devil paints this beautiful picture about the life that you can have. But you know it's wrong. But you say, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to do it anyways. Yeah. Mm. But then you see that it was a lie. You were deceived into believing the lie. And if you continue on that path, you'll be damned yep. to an yeah. eternal hell fire yes. right. Right. where there's weeping and wailing forever. Mm. Yeah. All you hear in hell is people screaming mm. in pain and in ag agony. Why? Because... God is holy. Amen. And God takes it very personal when He sends His Son to die for us. And then we say, eh, yeah. it doesn't really matter. Mm. It's just Jesus dying for me on the cross. I don't care. I'm still going to do what I want to do. Mm. He takes that very personal. Because yeah. mm. I, I don't know about you, but I love my son. Yeah. Amen. How much more does God love His Son, yeah. the Father, love His Son? Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's why it's such a big deal to know that Jesus died for your sins, but say, you know what, I'm not going to accept it. I'm going to continue in sin. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to accept the free gift of eternal life that was done on the cross. Amen. How do we accept it? By saying yes. By, by saying yes, I will obey. That's right. That's how you accept the free gift. You're not earning it by saying, yes, I'm going to stop being wicked. Right. You're not. That's, that's foolishness. Yep. Yes, it is. It's a free gift of what he did on the cross, and he expects you to act like a man, act like a person, and not like an animal. Right. That's right. Amen? Act like a saint. Amen. Act like a saint. That's right. Amen. 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 Grow up. Be a man. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? Be responsible for yourself. Yes. Amen. God came to bring us back our dignity. Amen. 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 He came back. He came yes. to make us mature in all of our ways. Romans eight thirteen says this. Romans eight thirteen, it says, "For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live." I'm going to say that again. It was Romans 8.13. I want you to memorize this verse, okay? It's a great street preaching verse. It's a good verse for, for our own Christian walk. It says this, For if ye live after the flesh, you will die. 
But if through the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, or mortify, then ye shall live. Amen. Amen. So, so we see that we put to death the deeds of the body through, through the Spirit. Amen? Yeah. Guess what? Every day I die to myself, I don't, I don't masturbate anymore. Amen. 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 Why? Because I put to death the deeds of the body through the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Amen. That means God will be with you and help you to fight through the withdrawals and temptations. That's right. So that you don't go back. Yes. Amen. 